Hey guys, so I just want to make this quick video here. I have two inputs, they're 24 volts. But I just, I just, another video of how these coils work. You can see here is a sine wave on one side of the motor. But let me walk, turn the motor on. Mm. So I've got it on now, it's speeding up. The top is the input and the bottom is the output. You'll see as it speeds up, it'll get more centered in the screen. Sorry about that. You can see where it's flat down here. That means it has hit the charging voltage of the output, which is this right here, this battery bank. And it goes into a 12 volt battery with this cap dump. It'll do about two amp pulses when it's full. But you can see right here where that line flattens out. That means it is hitting the charging voltage because the RPMs are fast enough. The uh, voltage in this coil is going high enough because of the rotor going past the, the magnet. I mean the coil when, when the motor's off. And that's what you're seeing right here. The motor is off down here and it's on up here. And then it's off down here. This charging voltage is coming just from the speed of the rotor and inducing that coil. Let me turn it off now and you'll see There, I've turned the motor off. Now you can see it should be just a pure sine wave like this. But since it's still charging and able to charge with those diodes, this it won't stop charging until the speed of the rotor goes down enough. It doesn't charge on this side of the wave, oops, up here because there's no diodes on that side, I'm only collecting on this side of the wave, on the output. It will only go away once the rotor gets slow enough to stop charging. pretty much done. So I'll just turn that side of the motor back on. There, I've turned that side back on. And you'll see as it speeds up, this line on the bottom will flatten out because it hit that charging voltage. It can't go any lower than this because of, of the voltage of the cap bank. On the output. The only thing that gets down here is the back spikes from the input, from the PWM, and the sine wave from the magnet itself. I just wanted to show that a little bit of a example of it actually running from the last video why they're designed the way they are and you can see give it a quick run up the RPMs of this thing is insane the amount of power it has is insane. For the amount of power it goes in, it's crazy powerful. When it gets up to speed, it'll be using less than uh, 150 milliamps on each side. That side's already in the 150 milliamp range. This one's coming down to it. 
once the motor is running for a little while, it'll stabilize. Everything will become smooth. There now you can see it just dropped right down 150. It's less than 150 now. And that one's a little less than 150 milliamps on the inside. And we're getting two amp pulses. A lot of that, that power is coming from the back spike right here, and the rest of it comes from this, from the motor going at those high RPMs to enable that charge. That's why I don't flip the coils. Like, like that's why I don't induce like an inverter circuit on these motors is because this part of the wave is going into the battery. Like if I was to flip the motor and pulse it this direction on this same set of coils oops, See, like this is the bottom down here. You wouldn't get anything here because you would be putting, inducing this voltage that is on the input on the on this input. If you had a dual input, like you know, inverting the the voltage to pulse this coil the opposite direction too. That's why I don't pulse this coil. I use an opposite coil. Each motor does the same thing. Each side of the motor, I mean. video and appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions or comments just leave them below appreciate you guys watching <laughs>